Hi, I'm Dr. Priyanka Reddy, Founder and Medical Director at the DNA Skin Clinic and Wellness Center, Bangalore. Let's discuss about the surgical treatment of androgenetic alopecia. It is called as hair transplantation, which is a surgical procedure where hair follicles are taken from the donor area and implanted onto the recipient area. What are the most common donor areas? Well, the back of the scalp is the most common donor area and the other areas being the hair from the beard or the body hair. And the recipient area is the bald patches on the scalp or a bald patch on the beard or some people go in for eyebrow transplantation also. So this is called as a hair transplantation. Well, the most important question here is how does the hair transplantation procedure last or the transplanted follicles stay forever? Well, the answer to this is the hair that is taken from the donor area, especially the back of your scalp, it is resistant to the hormone dihydrotestosterone. So the process of miniaturization, whatever effects the dihydrotestosterone has is not applicable to this donor area hairs which is why the results are long-lasting and permanent. So let's see the basic differences between FUT and FUE. So in FUT, when we cut a strip from the back of your scalp, we need to approximate the skin by using sutures. So there are sutures present in FUT method, while there are no sutures in the FUE and the skin heals by itself. So because of sutures, FUT takes a longer time to recover. The patient takes a longer time in FUT to recover while in FUE the recovery is pretty much fast. Because of the sutures there is also pain that is associated in FUT while in FUE the recovery is seamless and it doesn't involve any pain. And because of sutures there is a possibility of the patient to have numbness and stiffness of the neck and numbness of the treated area over the suture line for a long time. And again, because of the suture line, which is a permanent scar, the patient cannot have shorter hairstyles or go or completely shave or tonsure their scalp because the scar is exposed. While in FUE, having shorter hairstyles is possible because the scars are not visible to the naked eye. And um, it is also less expensive as compared to the FUE. So both the methods are surgical procedures. So please consult the board certified dermatologist or a surgeon before you get into these procedures and get the correct information. Please do not rush and get this procedure at the wrong place because hair transplantation is essentially a very safe procedure when done at the right place and by a right person. So you also have to protect your grafts uh, by keeping them moist. So you will be given a normal saline and you have to wet those hair grafts at regular intervals at least 5 to 6 times a day in order to strengthen the roots. So one can wash their hair from as early as after two days after the procedure. You can use a diluted shampoo or you can use baby shampoo and you have to use it in a specific manner in order not to disturb the grafts. So the, how you wash your hair will be demonstrated at the clinic. And for patients who have opted FUT, wound care for this trip is also essential. So applying antibiotic ointment at regular intervals is necessary. You will also be advised to take minoxidil topically and finasteride orally. However, this is not mandatory. You will be advised to take in order to strengthen the roots of your hair. So what to expect after the hair transplantation? Typically, the implanted hair will shed or fall out in a period of two weeks and then the new hair starts growing out and for you to see the complete result, it might take anywhere between six months to one year. So who are the candidates for hair transplantation or who are the candidates for FUT and FUE? So after seeing the pros and cons of each of the procedure, the patient has to evaluate whether they want to go in for FUT or FUE after a detailed discussion with your dermatologist or the surgeon. And who are not the candidates for hair transplantation? Patients with uncontrolled diabetes or hypertension, patients with poor donor area, patients with undiagnosed cause of hair fall and also patients with a condition called trichotillomania wherein the patients, it's a psychological disorder wherein the patients pluck their own hair follicles out. So these are some of the conditions wherein hair transplantation is contraindicated. So if you have any more queries, please contact us or leave a comment on the comment section below. Stay healthy, stay happy.